Hello everyone, this is Vintage Vinny, and welcome to another thrift store haul. I do apologize if I've been behind the camera lately, it is just so much easier for me at this time to be behind the scenes and filming the video for you all. So that way I can just get these videos up and running. And at the very end of this video I will be posting a very special announcement, and I hope you all are looking forward to this upcoming event if you haven't already seen it. So to start off with this thrift haul, this I purchased from the Goodwill in town that is having 99 cents everything in the store. That really has affected my ability to acquire resale items because everything in the store is one price, which is great. I mean, that's awesome that the store is able to do that, but I'm not finding as much as I would like to when I go there. So this is back. I bought this and another item when we had the townwide yard sale which was absolutely ridiculously awful they had run it or it had been running for three days by the time we had gotten to it and i bought nothing like it was not like previous years where many people were set up and i guess because covid hit and people just were itching to get out they set up really early and all that nonsense so we all walked out with nothing which is sad, and then I decided I needed to get a fix. I needed to find some stuff. So I went all around town to see if any stores were open. The Goodwill was. Our charity thrift store was not open. Neither of them were, and our Salvation Army was closed. So I only went to the one Goodwill, and I got this first piece, which is an awesome Noma cellophane wreath. Right here it says unit doesn't work, but it does. I like that it's in the original box because the box has some great graphics on it. It is rough, but it's still cool being as old as it is. I've seen these at antique shops for like four or five bucks, which is pretty fair for where it is, but I was happy to pick this up for a dollar. So this is what it looks like. It's just red cellophane, and then there's like this little foil decoration down here with a an electrical component right there and has a green bulb in it. So I thought that was pretty darn cool. And this item I also picked up the same day I got that cellophane wreath. Also for 99 cents, it's one of those vintage Christmas tins. It has poinsettias, it's got some candles on it and I think some holly leaves. No markings on it to say where it's from, but it's definitely got some age to it. If I had to guess, I would say the 60s possibly, maybe even late 50s but probably more into the 60s. It's got scratches and dings all over it. I haven't decided whether or not I'm selling it at a live sale or if I'm just gonna send it to a friend. I don't know if it would sell at a live sale. We'll see though. I do apologize for the glare. These items are not vintage, but I thought it would be fun to share them and I will tell you why. So I was just looking around all the office supplies at this one particular thrift store and I noticed these pieces of preservation, I guess you could call them, like, they're like sheet protectors for ephemera, like, you know, for your postcards and for all the other stuff that people collect that's really cool. And they're not vintage, like I mentioned, but why I picked them up was because I do collect a lot of ephemera myself, and buying this stuff new is ridiculously expensive. And I have three... Uh, cases of it. I only paid a dollar each and it looks like there's a pretty decent amount of them in here. Like if you look at the top here, there's a lot of them in here. So I grabbed all that they had because I knew that this was worth three bucks. Because you go to uh, antique shops or vendor malls and you see people set up with all kinds of different protective gear for your uh, for all your different kind of sports cards and things like that. And it's not cheap. So I went ahead and grabbed these. Take it out of the way here and I'll show you what it looks like. So you have one slot up here, which you could put for a vertical, or a horizontal postcard here, and then you could put some of your vertical ones here. Uh, perfect example of this, I have some pinup mutoscope cards that are shaped, like the image is this way, uh, horizontally. No, vertically, I don't know, it's too late. <laughs> And then I have most of my pinup cards that are shaped this way, so I can put them in here. 
So this was a really good pickup on my part. Again, look for this kind of stuff when you're at the thrift stores because brand new, this stuff is not cheap, whether you buy it online or you buy it from a vendor at an antique mall. So this was really interesting and a really cool piece of television history. It's a TV View Gold card, and I, this is going way back to, I think, the 1990s. And, I mean, look at how much it was back in the 90s. It was a $50 mail-in rebate. So it had $149.99, or $149 retail price. The mail-in rebate subtracted $50, so you only paid $99 after the rebate. And, yeah, that, that wasn't cheap back then. Let me see if I can find the year on it. I know I saw it somewhere. It's from the 90s, I know that, or like early 2000s. Anyway, you get the picture. I paid $350 for it, and it looks like it's going for a pretty decent amount of money, or people are asking a pretty decent amount of money for it on Amazon. I have not had a sale on Amazon in over a month. I haven't sent anything in, and I have a plethora of things to get in. COVID really affected that because... They were restricting a lot of things that they wanted in their warehouses that were going to be, you know, sellable, things that people were looking for. So I have so much stuff downstairs that needs to go, and I keep finding stuff for it. I do plan on sending in or having things sent back to me that I sent in a while ago because it just hasn't moved, and it was just not worth my time after dropping the price, and it hadn't moved. So, yeah, that's my story with that. Okay, so these next two items are rather racy. As you can see, I have censored the naughty areas. These are in wooden frames. I'm not exactly sure of the age. If I had to guess, it would be from the 1960s. And here's why. On the back, it says, The Picture Peddler uh, at 7332 Laurel Canyon Boulevard in North Hollywood, California, 91605. So these do have a zip code on them, so that means they're after 1963. But the weird thing is, now that we've looked at some bigger things, let's go ahead and look at some smaller things. And then since there wasn't a lot of thriftage for this particular video, we will go ahead and I have a small antique store haul that I'd like to share with you all as well. So, to start off with the small items, I was at one of my charity thrift stores and I found two of the Homestead pattern refrigerator dishes. I paid $1.50 each for them, so 3 bucks for both. I haven't decided whether or not I'm putting these on eBay or if I'm just going to put them in a live sale. I'll have to do more research and by the time you see this video, hopefully these will be up on eBay and if not, you'll know that they will be going to a live sale. More than likely, I will, oh, I don't know, if they're not worth it for eBay, I might just go ahead and keep the lids because I have a couple of fridge dishes myself downstairs in my keepsake stash that I may need the lids for and I might just sell the actual homestead dishes themselves because I'm not really crazy about this pattern. By the way, I think homestead was produced between 1976 and 1980. I know we have a lot of buyers with different names and I found this really awesome USA mug that has the name Connie on it. And I know we have a couple of Connies that come to all of our live sales. So I thought this might be a great piece to add to the live sale. I only paid 50 cents for it. So I'm hoping that somebody with this name will enjoy this mug. I don't know what it's in the shape of. It almost looks like a tooth. What do you all think? Does that look like a tooth to you? Now this is something that I had as a kid and it's very, very helpful as an adult. This is called Leapfrog Turbo Twist Math. Math is not one of my strong points, so having this little gadget here is very much a great way to refresh my memory on basic math. You can do multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, fraction, decimals, and I only paid 
75 cents for it. I like to keep this near me, especially if I just need to have a refresher, because like I said, my math sucks. So having this little device is awesome. And the last thing I'd like to share with you all, I paid $3 for. I believe this goes to a set, and it's, is it marked anywhere? I think it's marked Libby on the bottom, an L for Libby in that little circle. It's got different colors on it, the white, the yellow, the green, and the blue. And like I said, I believe this goes in the center of a drink caddy, and then it had glasses surrounding it. I just like the colors on it. And I may keep this for myself, and I may put this in a live sale. I'm not sure just yet. So that's all of the thriftage, so now we can show the antique stuff, or antique store stuff. To start the antique store haul portion of this video, we're going to start off with this really awesome butterfly gold gravy boat and cover dish or under dish. It was originally $10 and then the booth was having a 50% off sale, so I grabbed this for only $5. That will be in an upcoming live sale, so be on the lookout for that. This I really took a chance with because you can't really look anything up in some of these malls because the signal is so freaking bad. Anybody else have that problem? You go to an antique mall and there are a couple of hot spots where you can look things up or if you go right near the entrance you can pull out your phone and look up whatever you need to look up. But I just, I took some chances on some things. Not too much money I invested, but still, it was quite a bit. So this was one of them. It's a Lennox Sherbet, um, what do you call that, a Sherbet glass? And this is the mark on it. It says Lennox Moonspun Hand Etched. And I only paid $2 for it, but unfortunately it doesn't go for a lot, so this might end up in a sale for probably not more than, a little bit more than what I paid. Did that make any sense? Just a little bit more than what I paid is what I meant to say. I was thinking maybe about putting it on eBay because I know there's probably someone out there who's looking for a replacement, like they broke one in their set. But if it's not going for a lot, I might as well just put it in a live sale and see what happens. This was probably my favorite piece of the smaller items, that is. And then I have my two pieces, My uh, the last two pieces that I'm going to be sharing with you all are my favorites. So this was awesome. I only paid a buck for this. They said small plate handle. This is actually a lemon server, and it's definitely deco. I would say 30s, 40s maybe. It's marked Japan on the bottom, and it's got lots of crazing. But it's definitely my style in regards to what it is. I, it's been there for a while, and then I went ahead and jumped on it because why not, right? And this is for lemons, if I didn't say that or not. If you see a dish like this, and it's got this little handle. This is for serving lemons. I just thought it was neat and it definitely has that deco look. All right, so we got another piece of movie memorabilia. This is for the movie Norma Talmadge in Dewberry, Woman of Passion. Oh, maybe that's the actress's name. Women of Passion, Dewberry, Women of Passion, with Conrad Nagel and William Farnham. This must have been a B-movie because I've never heard of it. It's a Joseph M. Schenck movie. And it looks like they bought it from a vendor that went out. And I think they originally had five bucks on it, which I would have never paid. And then this booth only charged 10 cents. So I went ahead and picked that up and rescued it because, as you can see, it's getting kind of rough. So I had to rescue that for 10 cents. This came out of a booth that was 50% off. It's only worth about $25 to $30, but I thought it was still worth it. I paid $7.50. It's for the movie The Oregon Trail with Fred McMurray, William Bishop, and Nina Shipman. Shipman, not the other naughty word. It's in really good shape for its age. The cover that it's in will definitely need to be either replaced or just left the way it is. It's a movie from 1959. 
And it is an original because it, the images are not all fuzzy and faded. And it's just a really nice piece. So I will definitely be selling that. If you're interested, the link to my eBay shop is down below in the description. Okay, so now that we've looked at all that stuff, let's go ahead and check out my two favorite finds from this haul. So I was really, really happy to find this piece. It's a vintage German candy container, Santa Claus. And I only paid $12 for it, and personally, I think that that was worth it, despite some of the damage that it has. Uh, the little stick that holds Santa's head is missing, so I'm going to have to either replace it or just glue his head back on. And as you can see, he probably had some water damage to him at some point in time because it's kind of dirty and messy. And then he's missing an arm over here, and he's got some marks on the bottom of him. It looks like dried up mold or something. I don't know, but it's not harmful. It's not falling off, so I think it's okay. But I thought that was a really good price because I know I've seen these on eBay for a lot more, and I've seen them at antique shops, other antique shops, I should say for a whole lot more than what I paid. So I'll take the damaged Santa Claus Kennedy container from Germany for 12 bucks any day. And the last thing I'd like to share with you all to conclude this antique store and thrift store haul happens to be this really nice piece of Viking glass. I saw this immediately when I walked into the last building of this antique mall and I was astounded with how much it was. I got this vase, and as you can see, it is quite large. I got this for $3, and it's the color that I like. Had this been like avocado green or maybe amber, I would have probably sold it, but since it's that really nice shade of blue, I had to keep it for myself. So this is what the bottom looks like, and it's quite heavy at the base. It's hand, is it hand blown? I don't think it is. There's no pontal on it, so. But yeah, I mean, I thought three bucks for that was insanely good because I bought one of these much smaller at the Goodwill and for I paid $4.99 for that one, which I thought was fair because I know that these are very popular right now. So I knew that it was worth my five bucks to spend and I think I bought stuff to pay for it. So I'm not really st uh, stressing that. So yeah, I love this piece and I'm happy to own it. So that's everything I have for you today. I hope you all liked what I found. It may not have been a long video, but it was still something, right? I am planning on trying to pump out as much content as I can this week because of my special announcement that you all will see right now. All right, everyone, my special announcement is that I will be hosting my first ever Four Sellers One Sale on my channel, Vintage Vinny. Patrick from Trusty Huckster Mercantile is the first YouTube reseller that has hosted these, and I thought, why not give it a shot myself and give some smaller channels some more subscribers, as well as a chance to get the exposure to sell some more of their items. So along with me, Vintage Vinny, I will have Michelle from Mermaid Cove Plants and Treasure, Cindy from Cindy's Thrifting again, and someone who is local to me, Tim Stewart from Over the Years. I hope you all will join us on Saturday, August 29th at 5.15 p.m. Eastern. Pamela Blanchard's sale will be at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So I'm hosting it just a tad bit early because I know it's going to take us quite a while to get through all of the items that we will be sharing. I will have all three of my guests' channels linked down below so you can check them out ahead of time, see what kind of stuff that they like that they will be offering possibly, and just to get to know them better, and subscribe I hope. So I look forward to seeing you all on my channel at 5.15 on Saturday, along with my special guests. And I'm super excited to be hosting one of these, as this is my first time ever hosting. So I will see you all there. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye, guys.